Hi, this is Professor Evans. This video is for the students in EET 1214C. And in this video, we're gonna do another multi-sum demonstration of how we build a series parallel DC circuit and then take measurements. Up on the screen, I have the goal of what we're going to do in this video, as well as some reminders of how we measure current, measure voltage, and measure total resistance. So I'm gonna start by building the circuit that we are going to build in our lab for a series parallel circuit. If you have your lab manual, find the exercise that says multi-path voltage and current measurements. That's what we're gonna be doing in this video. So you wanna locate that in your lab manual, open up Multisim, and follow along with me. I'm gonna start by building the circuit shown in figure one from your lab manual. I'm gonna go grab some components, beginning with my source. I'm also gonna grab a ground. Next, I have four resistors in the picture. I'm gonna go grab four resistors as well. I usually just grab a 1K and then manually change the resistor values to what I want, rather than searching for each value. It's totally your preference on how you select the resistors. Now that I have all my resistors, I'm going to change their orientations so that I can match the picture in the lab manual. I had this circuit here from a previous video. I'm gonna delete that so that my reference designators will match the video. I should have R1 here, R2 here, R3 should be here, so let's change that. I'm gonna change the label here to R3, and this should be R4. Now I'm gonna go ahead and connect my circuit, and then I will select all of my resistor values according to the lab manual. I'm gonna be measuring voltages and currents in this circuit, so I am gonna to try to create enough space to add all of my ammeters and voltmeters. So I need some space to measure the voltage and current for R4. I need some space to measure the voltage and current for R3. So I'm moving these resistors around just to make sure I have space for those instruments. Now if you look in the lab manual, the picture does not have a, a value for the source voltage and that's because you're gonna be manipulating the source voltage to various levels when you do this lab. For now, I'm just gonna set the value at two volts. And then I'm gonna set R1 to 680 ohms. R2 is 4.7 K. R3 is 1.5 K. And R4 is 330 ohms. So I have each resistor set up as shown in the picture. And the goal of this lab is to measure the voltage and current for every resistor you see in the schematic. The first thing you wanna do is make sure that you can analyze this circuit by hand, which we've done in a previous video. Now we're going to add the tools to the circuit in Multisim and make sure that our results in Multisim match up with what we did by hand. And then the last step is to build this circuit on the bench and then make sure that all of your measurements match up to your hand calculations and your Multisim work. So with these types of circuits, we're trying to make sure that you have the skills to analyze it three ways, by hand, in multi-sim, and on the bench. So let's go ahead and add our measurement tools. Remember, we're gonna look at that indicators group to get our voltmeters and our ammeters. So I'm gonna get an ammeter for R1. And it looks like I might not have enough space to insert that there, so I'm actually just gonna put it there and move R1 over a little bit more to make sure that I have space. And I'm gonna move it up and down, make sure that it's connected properly, which it did, and then I'm going to turn off these values so that I don't clutter my circuit with unnecessary text. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that and put it right here to also get the current through R3, which R3 and R4 are in series, so the current for R3 is also the current for R4. Next, I'm gonna grab an ammeter to get the current for R2. And I'm gonna insert that right there, making sure it's connected. I'm 
So now I have a tool to measure the current through all three branches. Next, I'm going to measure the voltage for all four resistors. Before that, I'm going to go ahead and hit play and get some current values. So I can see that I have one milliamp of current going into this node. That's also the current for R1. That current splits, and 0.281 milliamps goes through R2, and 0.721 milliamps goes through R3 and R4. If I add these two up, according to KCL, I should get the total current going into this node, and we can see that these two values are approximately equal to 1.01 milliamps. So now I'm going to continue by adding a um, voltmeter for each resistor. And I'm just going to create a little bit more space to be able to add the voltmeter on either side of R1. Create a little bit more space this way as well. All right. So now I'm going to grab my voltmeters. I'm also going to go ahead and move this down a little bit. Again, creating more space for that voltmeter to connect. So there, I'm going to get the voltage for R1. Let's copy paste this to get the voltage for R3. And then I'm going to grab a vertical one get the voltage for R2. And I'll just copy paste that for R4. Now I'm going to hit play. And I've got all my voltages and all my currents. So now I know that when I build this circuit and set the voltage source to 2 volts, I should get a current of 1 milliamp for R1, a current of 0.28 milliamps for R2, a current of 0.7 milliamps for R3 and R4, and then I can see the voltages for each one of those resistors as well. So just as a reminder, to measure current, make sure that your ammeter is placed in series. That means on the breadboard you will have to break the circuit in order to connect your ammeter in series. Voltage is measured in parallel, so just clip your alligator clips on either end of each resistor to measure voltage, and then we need to also measure total resistance. So just as a reminder, if we're gonna measure the total resistance of this circuit, I'm gonna remove the power supply completely. So I'm just gonna put it up there for now so I can put it back later if I need to. I'm gonna add a multimeter. Connect the multimeter in place of our source. Double click, set it to ohms, hit play, and we have our total current in this, I'm sorry, our total resistance in the circuit as well. You'll notice that all of your ammeters and voltmeters now don't have a correct value, and that's because you don't have a power source connected. It's not measuring anything accurately except for total resistance in this state. But now I have my total resistance, which is about two kilo ohms. And when I'm done, I can put my source right back in there. So that's a quick tutorial of how you're going to start your multi-sim work for this lab. You're basically going to change the value of the voltage source and record the currents and voltages in your lab manual as you change that voltage source. Then you're going to build it on the bench and do the exact same thing. That's it for this video.